And what makes the triangle really that attractive is that lithium in this part of the world occurs as a brine, like in a brine lake, the Solars they're called in Argentina. And the key characteristic is that these Solars lend themselves to very, very low cost extraction, some of the lowest cost in the world. And that's why this is kind of like the golden chalice so that you want to go after and, uh, and, and have. <laughs> so being able to have some project in this part of the world is, is, uh, in the lithium space is highly, highly coveted. Our good day today, we have a special guest, Nico Kakos from Argentina Lithium, president and CEO of Argentina Lithium. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks to be here, Steve. Well, Nico, if you can tell us about yourself a bit, this is our first time meeting, but I am intrigued about your company and also intrigued about yourself. If you can tell us about your history and background before we get into Argentina Lithium. Well, first of all, Argentina Lithium, I think it's important to note that if there's any doubt, the company operates in Argentina despite what the name of the name of the company, but on jokes aside, I mean, I've been, I've been involved, uh, here in the mining exploration industry in Argentina for 32 years now, over three decades back in 1993. Uh, that was a time, uh, when the country liberalized its laws and allowed for the first time foreign investment into its mining industry. Before that, everything was government run. So this was a real pivotal event that happened three decades ago because there was no mine, hardly any mining, let alone mining exploration activity in that country at that time. And here you've got the seventh largest country by land mass in the world, zero mining activity. And next door, you've got Chile, which on the map looks like a tiny little strip, and, but generates you know, have some of the world's largest mines and they're all up against the border with Argentina. It was, that was the time it was me and Joe Grosso of the Grosso Group. He said to me, he goes, God would have to be real cruel to stop all this mineralization right at the border. It has to continue to the other side. That's it. And, it, and it, it's all, I mean, it, it wasn't, we weren't rocking some, Joe and I, but we were businessmen. That's my background as a businessman recognized this incredible opportunity quickly. We incorporated the company and we've become one of the pioneers of mining and mining exploration within Argentina. We're one of the most well-known, uh, junior groups in that country. And since that time, you know, we've run a number of junior companies and we've made a lot of discoveries. We would discover the Guacamayo gold mine, which is still in production today. We discovered the. Uh, Chinchilla silver lead mining partnership with the SSR mining. We took it from discovery all the way up through production. That's in production today. We discovered the Navidad, uh, silver lead, uh, deposit. It's the world's largest undeveloped silver deposit. And American silver owns it now. And they're beginning to make, to bring that into production in, in the uranium space. We discovered the Havana deposit district, uh, uranium district in the southern part of Argentina. We announced a. $200 million deal that'll take the project to feasibility and then ultimately through to, uh, development and production. Then here with Argentina lithium, we positioned ourselves very nicely within, uh, the, the lithium triangle. So we have a long history within the country. We're well known. We have a lot of good contacts in that part of the world. I'm a businessman. I look and feel for that gut feeling, you know, that's a good opportunity. And then we have a an exceptional team around me to tell me, no, you're wrong, or let's run with it, right? <laughs> I, I listen every time. <laughs> well, Nicholas, if you can start by telling us about the jurisdiction itself, I mean, is it, how friendly is it? If you can tell us about the infrastructure you've got there and, uh, tell us a little bit more about Argentina lithium. Yeah. I mean, the jury as a country, Argentina is a great place in which to invest in, and especially now with the a new government of Malay that's been in power for the last couple of years. Um, he's making much, much more for, uh, business friendly is slashing all kinds of regulatory red tape, creating tax incentives and other incentives for companies to involve, to get involved. We've seen in the last year alone, 
billions of dollars of investment coming in from the likes of BHP and Rio Tinto and in our case in Stellantis. Um, so there's some really big multinational company. And when I speak to um, institutional investors, I'm getting a very, very positive reception uh, at the stability that Argentina represents. And this mining opportunity, because it still remains, even after three decades, a very much underexplored country. So there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of big value discovery yet to, uh, to be made there. And uh, with Argentina, lithium, our projects are situated up in the northern part of, of that country, northeastern part, within a region that's called the Lithium Triangle. Now, for, for those who may not know what that is, Lithium Triangle is uh, an area that encompasses part of southern Bolivia, uh, eastern Chile and northwestern Argentina. Now, the Bolivia inside have some big deposits there, but got domestic issues in terms of getting those uh, into production. In, in the Chilean side, everything has been highly developed and highly, uh, you know, uh, in production and whatnot. But the Argentina side, a lot of the stuff is still remains to be discovered. And most of the potential is in the Argentina side. So we've used our contacts, our connections, and that we've developed over the last three decades, and we've acquired some of the best projects in some of the most enticing areas within uh, within that triangle. And what makes the triangle really that attractive is that lithium in this part of the world occurs as a brine, like in a brine lake, the salars they're called in Argentina. And the key characteristic is that these le the salars lend themselves to very, very low cost extraction, some of the lowest cost in the world. And that's why this is kind of like the golden chalice that you want to go after and uh, and, and have. <laughs> so being able to have some projects in this part of the world is is uh, in the lithium space is highly, highly coveted. So what's your flagship? If you can tell us about your flagship, your infrastructure there, and how much lithium do you think you have? Well, our flagship, we've got four projects. We've been really focusing on one project, the Rincon West project. It's in this one salt lake uh, that we share with our neighbor, Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto is in production there. They've they put over $3 billion in it just this year. So it's a big, big development. We're at a slightly earlier stage. We're about to announce our initial resource probably within the next uh, uh, 30 to 40 days from now. So in the beginning part of our fall. Um, the infrastructure there is excellent because it's up in northwestern Argentina and because of the activity of Rio Tinto, there are power lines there, there are highways, there's rail, there's all kinds of stuff. So we're situated from, from an infrastructure point of view, it's absolutely excellent. And that's really important because typically when these deposits go into production, these are some of the most expensive components of any production CapEx uh, scenario. Gotcha. Uh, let's move to the share structure a bit. If you can tell us about your shares, fully diluted options, Warren's written, as well as if you can tell us about insiders, yep. institutions. you mentioned St St Stellantis, but if you can tell us kind of main major players um, in the game here. Well, a major player is Stellantis. Stellantis owns 20% of, uh, our subsidiary and 19.9% to be accurate. And they have a, a right to convert that ownership into the owners of the parent publicly traded company to own 19.9% of the currently right now, we've got 134 million shares outstanding, uh, fully diluted 197 million, um, are besides Stellantis and some funds, about half of our stock is owned institutionally held, uh, management, uh, controls probably around 20% of the company. So it's really quite a very well run company. Stellantis, when they came to buy. 19.9%. They invested the equivalent of uh, 90 million US dollars into the company. Mm -hmm. So they were looking to acquire uh, 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 an agreement whereby they could get lithium. They don't care so much about the investment. They're after the lithium. So they have a, we have an offtake agreement with them so that when it goes into production, they will buy the first 15,000 uh, tons of lithium uh, for the first uh, uh, 15 uh, for, for seven years. And, uh, and in the meantime, now we're looking to announce our resource, right now, our initial re resource, move the company, get a pre, get a feasibility study published as quickly as we can. And then, you know, based on the results of that, go straight into production, uh, immediately afterwards. 
So we're trying to see how we can fast track this project as quickly as possible. Stellantis has a, a thirsty need for lithium and uh, they're looking for us to supply a significant portion of it. <laughs> they must see something in the lithium triangle uh, and invest in uh, your the company. Uh, so if you can just tell us about kind of generally what's lithium used for, uh, I know that uh, um, it's used for quite a bit, but I mean, why was Stellantis excited about it? What makes you excited about it? And for the listeners, uh, you know, for who want to invest in lithium, why Argentina lithium? Yeah, well, Stellantis, for those who may not know, is, is the old Chrysler Fiat company. They renamed that in 2022. When I, they first approached me, I didn't know who they were either until I looked it up. And, oh my gosh, this is one of the biggest car companies in the world. So the, anyway, <laughs> they are really a big company with a big production. They have a, a number of uh, labels uh, that they produce. Um, you need lithium. We need lithium. Lithium, we use it every day. It's in our, it's our electronic watches. It's in, you know, they're used for batteries. Uh, but most important, the biggest driver right now for lithium is electronic vehicles, electric vehicles. China is a major driver for that uh, right now. And uh, they've got one of the most advanced uh, lithium electric vehicle uh, industries in the world. But other companies like Stellantis, uh, they have their productions set, set up. They've got their demand schedule and they're seeing that they need to have lithium by a certain time and uh, they're really counting on us to get up and get our project up and running and uh, start supplying them with some lithium awesome. and why would should somebody consider a company like us well i mean besides you know i could tell you why did Stellantis choose us above others and what they were looking for they were looking to acquire a company not one that was necessarily in production. They're looking to get a good deal on their lithium. So they thought if we go downstream to the exploration stage, find a company that's well run, that has a history of success, that has a management team that knows how to take a project from discovery all the way through to production and have a track record of that. That was enough for them to make that decision for a very sizable investment in our company. So without saying you should consider those, these are some of the points that Stellantis considered in making an investment. So make your own inference there is all I can say. <laughs> so what you're located where, Nico? You're located in Argentina? Uh, our, well, the company's operations are in Argentina. We have an office in uh, Mendoza. Right now you're talking to me from uh, our office in uh, Vancouver. If you can tell us about the connections you have there and kind of the, the edge that you guys have navigating uh, the Argentina terrain that maybe other companies aren't as fortunate. Well, after three decades of, uh, of operating in Argentina continuously, um, making discoveries, we, we know everybody in the, in the mining industry, uh, throughout the government municipal wise, uh, uh, province wise, federally. We're very well aware of, of everybody in, in the local players and, you know, the suppliers with projects and, uh, that come to us. We have a reputation of being very open, transparent, honest dealing in Argentina. And that goes a long way in that country. So that in turn turns into a magnet and we always get a lot of really good, uh, projects that are offered that come our way. So it's a competitive advantage for sure that we have. And that uh, we've got a great team in Argentina that we've built and, you know, people that have worked for us for 15, 20 years now. And, uh, so there's, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to replicate a team like that. Yeah. So, and as investors, I'm an investor, my, uh, I'm not a full disclosure. I'm not an investor in the company. I am interested in lithium. Uh, that may change. I might be, uh, investor soon to get, get more excited, the more I talk to you, Nico, but uh, <laughs> you can tell us about Argentina lithium, where. Are you guys on the Lasan curve? Where's the deep value? I mean, why, uh, what kind of value are people getting when they invest in Argentina lithium? Well, with one thing, you got to step back and look at the, the commodity itself, right? The, the, the price of lithium has really collapsed quite a lot from uh, the last couple of years. And that has a lot to do with, you know, international politics and whatnot. But uh, we're seeing now in the last a few months that the price of lithium is beginning to strengthen again. There are shortages being predicted again for lithium. Lithium has been 
a cyclical commodity. And I think we've seen, in my personal belief anyways, I believe that we've seen the bottom of it. As the lithium price starts to begin, the last uh, couple of cycles, the rise was very rapid and that valuation transferred right away into, into the company. So there's one good reason uh, to look at a, 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 a lithium company. Um, why look at a company like Argentina Lithium? Well, we're at that point where we've put together our engineer and we've got our plans together. We're just getting ready right now uh, to, to start uh, announcing our resource, announcing uh, further studies that we're going on. We're looking to see how do we can fast track. If the price of lithium uh, moves in parallel with that, I think we're going to see a very significant uh, leverage uh, price to, you know, in this stock. Nico, is there any other news or anything else you'd like to share before I ask about your information on how do people find you and how to invest? Um, well, you know, the lithium space, I, I found like, um, the companies that I've usually made money and not the ones besides the ones that I manage are, are those that, you know, it's kind of like, but you, you buy your straw hat in the fall and you wear it in the summer, you buy it when it, it most. Investors think it's a little out of fashion, but you right. see some specifics in there and you re you recognize like, wait a minute, this could be an, an interesting bet going forward. And then you, you, you just sit and wait and go for the ride. And I find those have been my, my favorite investments. Uh, so that's one way to, to, to look at, uh, when you're considering a company like Argentina Lithium. It's like recognizing grandma's clothes is coming back in, becoming cool again before everyone else recognizes it. Right. That's right. That's right. Let's let, let the kids finding some of my clothes. Like, oh, that was really cool. I'm like, oh, it's. <laughs> I'm all about. I'm all about finding the uh, out of fashion stuff to. Uh, <laughs> so um, it's it's good to hear that you say that you think lithium is is way undervalued. Uh, Nico, if you can tell us about your ticker information, where you're uh, where you're trading, your website, and how people can reach you with more questions. Absolutely, our ticker we're trading on like TSX Venture Exchange, the stock symbol LIT. Um, you can reach us on, uh, you can, you, all our information that I've seen and, uh, is all on our website, argentinalithium.com. By all means, there's a phone number there, uh, 604-687-1828. Give us a call. Talk to me. Talk to our investor relations team, Sean, uh, Berger. We're happy. We're always happy to talk to investors and answer any questions anyone may have. Well, Nico, we look forward to following your story. Great to have you on our show and, uh, we hope to be in touch. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Steve.